Thanks everyone for joining in. We are about to kick off uh, Code Beam Lite. Uh, I think uh, just quickly wanted to introduce the man himself, uh, Francisco, as you know him. Uh, he is uh, the creator and the CTO of uh, Erlang Solutions, but uh, more importantly, he's been behind the Erlang ecosystem. Uh, you know, the conferences that you see, all the Erlang and Elixir conferences. Uh, someone who I uh, highly look up to as someone who's bringing the functional programming and Erlang and Elixir community forward. So uh, without too much of a delay, I think I want to hand it over to you, Francisco. Take it away. Well, Niraj, thank you so much for having me. So, you know, today, I think unlike my last talk at Kobe in India uh, and Functional Conf, I I'm here not to share knowledge. Um, and instead here, I'm actually rally here to rally you and all of your friends, uh, you know, to come forward and start sharing your knowledge uh, and help us, you know, build the Erlang ecosystem. Um, what I will be doing is introducing, you know, the Erlang Ecosystem Foundation, uh, you know, mentioning who we are, uh, what we've been up to, and finally, you know, how you can actually go in and start getting involved. Now, who are we? Um, the Erlang Ecosystem Foundation uh, got founded um, the last decade, uh, probably two, three years ago in 2018. It was a group of companies and individuals who are really passionate about the Erlang Ecosystem, but felt that it was time to go in and get together, uh, you know, rally community and, and start leveraging our network to get together people who, who could then cooperate and work together. You know, we been lucky enough to see a single programming language, Erlang, turn into an ecosystem of, of languages. And you know, we also, you know, and often these ecosystem of languages came from a variety of communities. So we wanted to go in and really start getting, um, start getting these communities to start working and cooperating together uh, in a wide variety of, of, of work groups, which, you know, we'll, we'll get into right now, but you know, who we are, you know, we're, we're a nonprofit, you know, we're individuals from the Erlang and Elixir community and not only Erlang and Elixir community. And what we're doing is we're volunteering our time, you know, to grow the ecosystem. Um, the goal has always been, uh, you know, to grow and support a diverse community around Erlang and Elixir and, and the ecosystem as a whole. And encourage you know, uh, the continuing development uh, of technologies and open source projects, you know, based on and around the Erlang runtime. Um, it, it's and it's it's not about Erlang or Elixir. It's actually about all of the languages running on the Erlang VM, which we today know as, as the Beam. But it may not even be about the Beam either. You know, in the future, you know, new VMs will certainly come up. And, you know, and if the community finds it important, uh, you know, to develop and promote them, uh, the foundation will focus on them too. And, you know, it is, and that is the important bit. Uh, the important bit is that the community is one that guides the foundation. It is the members which tell the foundation you know, what direction to do. And it's foundation from the community to the community. And, and when I talk about the community, you know, that means you. I don't know how many of you are aware of it, but, you know, there are, you know, last time I counted, there were over 35 languages uh, running on the beam, 35. Um, you know, these are some of the most well-known or popular ones. Yeah, you know, we've got Erlang, Elixir, this flavored Erlang, Blue Earl, and we're seeing a, a foray into um, statically typed languages. Uh, so Caramel, Gleam, uh, we've got, you know, Sophia. Uh, I don't know how many of you have heard of Sophia, but uh, it's, um, it was developed by Eternity and it's a domain specific language for smart contracts. But yeah, like all the others, it also runs on the beam. So, you know, we're seeing a lot of language inventors um, which have implemented language on the beam actually being very interactive within the various workers of the foundation. To give you some numbers, you know, the foundation in numbers, um, you know, there are currently 26 sponsors, uh, two of them, I'll, I'll introduce them soon, you joined last month. Sponsors are companies which uh, donate money and allow us, uh, you know, to go in and pay stipends, pay overhead costs, and, you know, support activities. Um, among others, you know, they're supporting this conference and have helped, you know, sponsor quite a few students who joined. We've got 140 annual supporting uh, members. Uh, they pay a membership fee, which allows them uh, to vote. And alongside that, 
uh, members who wish to, um, who, who are actually contributing. Um, and you know, by contributing, you know, they're, they're active in the work groups and you know, contribute, I believe, a minimum of around 20 hours per month of their time in, in developing uh, libraries, helping you know, build community. Uh, get also uh, a, a, you know, what we call a uh, either a managing or a contributing uh, membership. And, um, and that gives them also the right to vote for the board. There are 17 lifetime supporting members. Um, you know, to become a lifetime supporting member, you pay your $999 and, and, and then you, know, you basically are eligible uh, to vote uh, for, for the rest of your natural life. We have voted in two fellows, actually three fellows, uh, Joe, Mike, and Robert. So um, fellows are you know, members you know, of the community who have done outstanding work. And you know, what we did is in 2019, you know, soon, soon after the foundation had been created, uh, Joe Armstrong passed away before we were able to vote him in as a, as a fellow. And the bylaws you know, clear, clearly state that you know, fellows have to be alive. So we couldn't posthumously go in and, and vote Joe in. So we created a new uh, title, the Fellows Emeritus. And, uh, but the, the, the bylaws didn't state that you were not allowed to vote in someone who had passed away. So uh, Joe Armstrong, um, Mike Williams, and Robert Birding all became, you know, got voted in as fellows. And then you know, Joe got automatically disqualified, but we made him a fellow emeritus. And then so we, we, we kind of, yeah, we got creative and found a solution to the problem. So you know, we have you know, two fellows and a fellow emeritus, and we've got 917 basic members uh, when we last counted yesterday. And you know, basic memberships is free. Anyone is allowed uh, to, to join. And what you do is you get access to you know, the Slack channel and you're able to go in and interact with any of the 12 work groups. So I really recommend you, you know, go in to the earlef.org website now and sign up uh, for, for a free membership. It would be great you know, to see you all do it. And you, know, you will get a few, you know, the odd newsletter, but more, more important than that, you know, you'll be able to get access to the Slack channel and I'll be getting back to that very soon. Now, uh, this is the board. Um, the board is voted in by uh, the board is voted in uh, once a year um, by the community and you know, by, by, by the members. And just to give a quick update, you know, we had Jose, who was uh, one of the founding members. He decided to step down a year ago to focus on the machine learning work group. And just last week, Ben Marks uh, got elected in. He's a new member of the board. He replaced Richard Carson, who'd been also founding member, as well as Maxim Fedorov and Kenneth Lundin, who both went in and got re-elected. And you know, who, who's the board? You know, Pierre Stritzinger, you might know from the Grist boards. You know, Miriam Pena has been part of the ecosystem for you know, well over a decade. Uh, she was voted one of the 12 uh, inspiring women to watch in tech in 2018. Uh, Maxim Fedorov is, um, is, is a senior engineer at WhatsApp, so it's a really great connection to have. You know, Alistair Woodman and well, he's been around the community for ages. Uh, he's an entrepreneur and angel investor at Cisco. Uh, you know, Sebastian Strollo was a colleague of mine at the Computer Science Laboratory where they invented airline when I was an intern there. Um, you know, Kenneth Lundin is the manager of the OTP team. Um, and then, yeah, we've got uh, Brian Paxton who you know, initially got involved in the foundation you know, very early on and, and then, um, got involved very early on um, with helping out with the infrastructure and then you know, got voted to the board. Uh, there's me, you know, there's Fred Herbert, who you'll know from all of his books, you know, Erlang in Anger, Learn You From Erlang, you know, Adopting Erlang in Property-Based Testing with, you know, with Erlang and Elixir. Um, you know, Sophie, uh, Sophie's been working with Elixir also forever. Uh, she initially at the Flatiron School and then she's currently at GitHub. And she's also a co-author of you know, Phoenix Programming. Uh, with LiveView and Ben Marks, he got involved with Elixir Bleacher Report, you know, helped him migrate from Ruby to, to Elixir, and is currently the VP of Engineering at Subspace. He also co-authored Adopting Elixir. Uh, so it's an amazing lineup, and they're all here to actually serve, you know, we are all here to actually come, uh, serve you. And, you know, how can you get involved? The best way you know, for you to get involved is, you know, through the work groups. 
uh, go in, you know, join the Slack channels, lurk, join the calls which the various work groups have, and reach out to the work group chairs. You know, look at their issue trackers on GitHub. And, I, and I'm going to go in into what a few of these work groups have been working on, just to give you a taste over, you know, over what has been achieved so far, which is, is you know, pretty impressive, but also you know, where your help is needed. First and foremost, you know, we've got the build and packaging group. Uh, on you know, the top left, you can see a build and packaging. You know, that's a Slack channel in the early F Slack channel. Um, the, the aim of this work group is to go in and involve you know, the tools in the ecosystem related to building, documenting, and deploying code with a strong focus on interoperability between the Beam languages. So it, it's, let's not go in and reinvent the wheel across languages. Let's create a solid foundation which the ecosystem can use. And I think they have, you know, the build and package group have been one of the most active ones. Um, you know, they've done a lot of rebar mix repairs and updates. So, you know, there are discussions about supporting pre built artifacts in mix. Uh, rebar free already supports them. And, you know, and it's also that, you know, they've also had discussions on how to ease the life of all of the Gleam users, Gleam being uh, another, you know, a statically type Gleam language. Um, there was the documentation work group, which was merged into the build and packaging work group. Uh, they achieved, you know, X docs, which they shipped. And they created the, the documentation airline extension proposal, which you know, got accepted and then now allows you to, to basically go in and you know, they've created a standard for documentation in all of the languages within the ecosystem. Um, there are you know, currently kind of ongoing discussions about supporting offline builds yeah, and vendoring dependencies rebar three. Uh, rebar three hex uh, version seven was released with two factor authentication. Um, mini repos you know, for rebar three caught up. Um, you know, and that's you know, looking at hex four right here. And there are also you know, quite a few talks. Uh, you know, it's taking a long time, but there's a lot of brainstorming and innovation happening over finding ways to integrate rebar three into OTP. Um, you know. Hex folks uh, are currently going in and doing a round of license normalization in all of the packages and all of the build tools. And yeah, where do they need help? Um, you know, I think there's a lot happening right here. So if tooling and your build and package is of interest to you, go in and look at the you know, issue tracker on GitHub, go in and start following the Slack channel. I think one of the most interesting um, projects they're currently working on is, you know, the infrastructure project is an infrastructure project, which aims to create a new continuous integration system that is integrated with all of the OTP repos. Um, and they want to go in and create this continuous integration system, which automatically tests you know, all of the builds and push requests and, and pull requests. And, you know, with an intent to, to hand it over, you know, to the build and packaging group as we go along. So how do you get involved? You know, this, this applies to all of the work groups. Uh, so not just in the package and build work group, but you go in into the earlyf.org website. And in there, you, you see there's a work group link up there. You click on it. You go in and you see all of the work groups. You click on the work group, which interests you. And you, know, you get a description of the work group. You get the list of users who's chairing it. But on the top right, it also tells you how to get in touch. Some workers have email addresses, others you, you can reach on the Slack channel and prefer Slack to, Slack to, to, to email. Others you know, have, um, you know, have a GitHub repo uh, with issue trackers where you can actually go in and see issues which have been raised, which is also a very clear indication how you can get involved and help. And last but not least, there's also a calendar. Um, all of these work groups have regular calls. If you're, anyone is welcome to join these calls, <clears throat> and you know you can find about you know the joining details you know through the calendar, and you can actually subscribe to the calendar and, and embed it in your own. So this is it for the build and packaging. Uh, another work group which has been very active is the observability work group. So you know hashtag observability on Slack, and their goal is to evolve the tools in the ecosystem related to observability, such as metrics, distributed tracing, and logging, with you know. It, you know, is made possible, and all of this with a strong focus 
on interoperability between beam languages. Solve the problem from one language, make sure they work on all the other beam languages. Um, they've had a lot of achievements. Um, they've previously gone in and integrated Erlang's logger. Um, you know, they, they've structured the logging, released in Elixir 1.11. They've worked on the telemetry library. And a lot of the work now is, you know, the telemetry library has been around for a while, but a lot of the work which is happening is, you know, working out patterns and best practices and implementing them across all of the libraries and applications, you know, within the ecosystem. Um, open telemetry, so, you know, looking at distributed tracing, uh, they're keeping up with the specs right now, which, which are evolving. And the main project, you know, that they're currently focusing on right now is instrumentation of functions, you know, for open telemetry and the somewhat confusingly named, you know, telemetry library. Uh, they've reached uh, version 1.0 alongside you know, many other, you know, very well-respected languages, uh, mainstream languages. So, you know, this is a blog post. Um, you know, that they posted, um, which uh, you can just Google uh, and, and, you know, go in and read more about. Uh, they are on the lookout for volunteers. So a call out for volunteers is needed around all of the open telemetry instrumentation libraries. Um, there are a lot of projects, you know, still in need of instrumentation. And also there's a need to provide an easy setup to distribute, you know, the tracing of Erlang and Elixir in the whole ecosystem. So, you know, this is, you know, that is the place just to start for anyone looking to contribute. And you can actually go in into the kind of open telemetry um, GitHub repo uh, and just search on open telemetry airline contrib. And in there, you know, you, you'll find, you know, the issue tracker. And another gateway, apart from the Slack channel, obviously, is also to look at the calendar and join the car calls. Education, training, and adoption. Um, yeah, I think they're probably one of the most active groups uh, reaching out to uh, reaching out to you know to the wider community, and that's where I think you know we would need a lot of help in India uh, to go in and help uh, you know help with the meetup, uh, help with trainings, um, you know start providing you know lists of guest lectures and lecturers for, for local universities. And they're currently working on, you know, publishing, you know, training material in Spanish, but, you know, why not do it in Hindi? You know, what's stopping you? So what they've done in the past is, you know, they're the ones who've gone in and defined a stipend program, which has now been adopted by the whole, um, found, by the whole foundation. And they're also sponsoring, you know, diversity um, conference and tutorial tickets. Um, you know, for minorities and underrepresented groups in tech. You know, they're focusing on guest, a guest lecture program. So it's a program which helps connect universities and companies you know, to spread the word of the, you know, of Erlang and Elixir uh, to students. And universities and companies can register, um, you know, for public lectures. And they're also able, the university is able to then go in and search um, for other universities, but also, you know, members who are willing to give uh, guest lectures and tutorials, you know, close to them. And right before the pandemic, they were working on meetup trainings, um, you know, defining a train the trainer program, which would then be able to go out and, and start training others. So now that you know, the pandemic is easing and we're coming back and meeting face to face, you know, I think you know, this is something which, again, they need a lot of volunteers for, which you know, they've dusted off. Now, embedded systems work group. So you'll find it in the Slack channel under you know, the hashtag embedded. Um, their goal is to evolve tools in the ecosystem related to observability. Uh, so, um, yeah. So the, the, their goal is, is you know, to go in and evolve sorry, the whole ecosystem, not evolving you know, observability but looking at embedded uh, and, yeah, and bringing the bean languages to the embedded space. Um, I think you know, there's been a, Erlang was invented as a language you know, to run embedded telecom applications. Uh, and now you know, with hardware getting more powerful, um, yeah, I think more and more compute is moving into embedded devices. And, and I'll, I'll be speaking a little, little bit more about in a second. Uh, but, you know, what are the biggest achievements? 
you know, the JIT assembly compiler you know, for ARM64 and ARM32. So this was, uh, you know, uh, Ericsson have worked on the JIT compiler, but they're not supporting all of the architectures. The foundation, you know, funded stipends uh, to bring the JIT uh, compiler, you know, to ARM64 and ARM32 architectures, which Ericsson have now integrated into the main release. Um, there's a lot of collaborations around NERVs, GRISPs, and Meta Erlang. And last but not least, the ROSI project which is an implementation of the robot operating system in Pure Airline. And Natalia will be speaking right after me uh, about the ROSI project. Um, it was funded by the foundation and is a cooperation across companies and academia. Um, you know, as part of the embedded work, they've also started an engagement with academics. So they have a lot of developers who have ideas but they have no time to really think them through and code them. So what they do is they post these ideas to academics uh, so that if academics have interests and you know, students or postdocs, they can develop them with support from the Erlang Ecosystem Foundation. And that's how the ROSI project started off. Uh, it's a you know, cooperation with uh, the University of Milan. So uh, yeah, and Natalia will tell us more about it right after. Now, even more exciting, you know, well, not even more exciting, but as exciting and very tightly connected to Embedded is the machine learning work group. So the machine learning work group got founded by Jose, and the goal is to develop the ecosystem on all aspects in the context of machine learning, from native compilation to high-level abstractions and auxiliary programs. So it's, it's a very wide scope. And it's a new area which has been explored for Elixir and ultimately the Beam. So you know, in the first instance, uh, the machine learning work group has gone in and actually gathered experts in machine learning in, in AI space who are not necessarily um, beam experts. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of NX. So you know, what they've done is you know, they've gone in and created a subset of Elixir, which runs in the GPU. And this foundation has become the foundation for neural networks and other machine learning algorithms. Uh, they started with an NX. Um, EXLA, which is an XLA compiler for NX, and TorchX, which is LibTorch backend for NX. Now, to foster adoption and expand the community, they've gone in and created Livebook, uh, bringing collaborative interactive notebooks to Elixir and hoping that providing a high level tool you know, to work in Elixir will help expand the community and bring machine learning enthusiasts to the ecosystem. So keep in mind, it's not always about having the best library you need to get people to use them. And I think, yeah, Jose excels at this. Um, on top of that, they also have an explorer, which is an abstraction database, data, you know, which allows you to abstract data sets to Elixir. And explorer is there for your know, people working with very large data sets, uh, distribution and concurrent processes. So you know, I think it all goes hand in hand. Now, Together with Axon, which, which is you know, the machine learning framework uh, Sean Warrick is working on, there's a very, very long roadmap. And what you need to do is join the Slack channel and you look at the issue tracker yeah, and join the work groups and start contributing. Um, but you know, if you're a bit intimidated about starting to contribute, just as important, go in, start using the libraries and start giving the work group feedback on your use and your experiences of them. Is that it's what's going to allow you to go in and um, it's what's going to allow you to go in and, and, you know, and help foster the adoption. Now, I spoke about embedded. I spoke about machine learning. What makes me excited about both? Well, the two go hand in hand, uh, believe it or not. Um, because you know, this is a quote from Gartner uh, where from 2017, so from five years ago, and it says that around 10% of enterprise generated uh, of enterprise generated data is created and processed outside of a traditional data center or cloud. So this was five years ago. They predict that they, they predicted that by 2025, this figure will reach 75%. And, and this is what excites me you know, about what's going on with Ericsson, you know, combined with work around machine learning and embedded. Uh, traditionally, we always moved the data to the compute. You know, we weren't amassing large amounts of data, you know, but that is changing year on year. Every year we collect more data, uh, 
than all of the previous years put together. So it's increasing exponentially. And it's becoming really expensive to move this data around. So instead of moving the data to the compute, as we used to do uh, in 2017, we're moving the compute to the data. So close to the source. And you know, this is where edge networks and IoT devices, you know, to the edge networks and IoT devices themselves. So instead of transmitting data, we will be making decisions locally and just transmitting the results of the compute. And so, you know, put together you know, the amazing work of Lucas Larson and the OTP team, you know, we've got the JIT compiler, uh, you know, pair it up with Sean Moarity and Jose Berlin's effort on bringing machine learning to the beam, and, you know, Frank Hundler's efforts on nerves, uh, alongside much more powerful processes and embedded devices, I think we'll soon have a platform for machine learning and AI, which we can use on all of the devices, you know, all running on the beam. So this is really what what you know makes me really excited about what's going on and probably why you should be getting involved and start listening and, and looking up over what's happening. And obviously, um, as soon as you deal with data, as soon as you deal with IoT and embedded devices, uh, security becomes critical, becomes critical in a wide variety of area spaces, but right here. Uh, and there's a security working group on Slack. Here you know, it's the hashtag security, it's a Slack channel. And their most visible achievement has been secure coding and development guidelines. Um, you know, they've also worked with you know, Open ID Connect, online certificates, uh, the online certificate revocation protocol, and are planning a security testing guide. Um, you know, if anyone is interested in any of these, or if you're just interested in the topic around security and the beam, you know, join the security channel. Uh, and participate in their calls. So their next call is at April 6th at 3 p.m. GMT, which I believe is at around 8.30 uh, p.m. India time, you're depending on what time zone you're in. So uh, go in, join them, meet them, get to know them, and, and again, start contributing. And then finally, last but not least, you know, the unsung heroes. Um, you know, you know, and you can become an unsung hero yourself. Join the infrastructure working group. They are the foundation of the foundation, and the mission is you know, to provide tools and services that enable members to communicate efficiently, share ideas, and updates. So if you're into DevOps, if you want to help improve the website, it's all open source in Elixir on GitHub, uh, join, join the Slack channel. We're also looking for volunteers, and reach out, reach out to me for that, um, to uh, help build a jobs board. Um, uh, where you know, we plan on, on putting together companies and you know, people looking for work. Now, just wrapping up, all of this wouldn't be possible without the generous contribution of all of our sponsors. Um, uh, to become a sponsor, you know, these companies have donated between $2,000 and $10,000 per year. And just a shout out you know, to the latest editions, Weedmaps and EMQX who joined this month. And I would really rally you to go in and tell your employees to become sponsors in the Erlang Ecosystem Foundation. It's for them, it's not that much money, but it allows us to, to actually go in and fund a lot of these projects. Well, you, you'll argue with your, with your um, employees, why would you know, companies join? Well, a variety of reasons, but you know, there's exposure to their services, um, recruitment. If they're recruiting, it helps increase their visibility. I mean, we show all of the logos uh, in all of our presentations. And in some cases, just to say, thank you, Erickson, thank you, Jose, and thank you, community at large. You know, And this is a wonderful quote from uh, Valentin Michik. Um, he is the founder of Ferris Avantgarde, is a company in South Africa. And Erlang and the Beam have basically allowed him to have a huge impact on the whole telecom infrastructure in Africa. Um, and he felt you know, that the foundation was helping build the foundations which would allow others like him to create a similar impact in the respective countries. So he's gone in and he's actually you know, donated and become a member. And you, you can ask him just to email sponsorship at the earlyf.org. Uh, the goal is to achieve $200,000 in sponsorship donations per year. And yeah, depending on the turnover uh, of your employers, it, you know, it, it's, you know, there are various costs associated to it, but yeah, uh, you can get, you know, you, you can also give very small donations, um, but obviously uh, larger donations are, are needed and welcome. So just in conclusion, um, as I'm running out of time, how can you get involved? 
uh, lurking the Slack channel is very welcome. Uh, go in, join a work group channel, ask questions, or you know, just read their issue tracker, uh, attend their meetings and listen in and get an idea of what's going on before you even make a commitment. Uh, if you've got new ideas, you're welcome to go in and propose a new work group. Um, you know, processes on how to, to, to propose work groups are on the website. Stipends, uh, you can request a stipend to get some work paid for if you've got a particular project. And it then gets assigned to a work group uh, and, and you get someone who will ship review it through it. Um, you can become a member. So please go in earlyf.org and register today. And more importantly than not, more, just as important, ask your companies you know, to become a sponsor and help fund what we're doing. Um, this is where you can follow us on social media and Twitter. So join the foundation and you know, start becoming loud and participate in the community. So big thank you for me. Great. Thanks, uh, Francisco. I think uh, there's a lot of uh, useful information that you packed into this 30-minute presentation. Uh, I think we've got some of this information tweeted out as well as you were presenting. Hopefully, other folks who are not joining in would still be able to benefit. So uh, just yeah, wanted to thank uh, Francisco again for the great talk.